Welcome. Starman by James Robinson is a quiet classic from the 90s. It has a very simple theme concerning maturity and accepting one's adult responsibilities. However, it's also about legacy, respecting history, and maintaining a healthy reverence toward the sacrifices that made the world a better place than it was previously. The 90s, which is usually called the grim and gritty era, was a rough time for comic books, despite the mainstream relevance and sales the medium had achieved. Many titles tried to be dark and realistic. Unfortunately, most were completely exaggerated, melodramatic, and terribly written. Another trend of this era was to revamp and update previously popular but somewhat anachronistic characters for a contemporary audience. Out of this environment came Starman. It was a series starring a modern approach to a reasonably obscure character from the golden age of comics. At the same time, it contained realistic characters, an understated tone, and it was one tightly plotted, evenly paced superhero epic. Interestingly, there are many more emotional beats than fist fights. In fact, Starman comfortably exists in a slightly gray area between a regular DC superhero title and the offbeat Vertigo Comics material. DC superheroes appear throughout, and there is a brief tie-in with the ongoing Vertigo title, Sandman Mystery Theater. Overall, the tone and the atmosphere of Starman is unique, and it feels like it exists just off to the side of the mainstream DC universe. To be accurate, this wasn't the first reinterpretation of the character. Starman had gone through several iterations since his debut in 1941. During the course of the series, all of these past versions would be included and integrated into the series. Viewed in this context, Starman, the series that is, accepts the legacy of the character and then adds to it, without trying to dismiss what was previously established. It's what Alan Moore did with both Miracle Man and Swamp Thing. Instead of discarding the inconsistencies and the silly, naive stories of prior eras, these elements are incorporated and recontextualized for a modern audience and it's done without diminishing the nostalgic charm these elements represent. Speaking of elements, there are many that make Starman a satisfying read. It's not only a character study of the protagonist, Jack Knight, but it's also a history lesson about the sprawling metropolis he's vowed to protect, Opal City. These two elements, along with an extensive supporting cast, are fleshed out and come alive over the course of 81 issues, two annuals, a handful of tie-ins, and a miniseries. As for the lead character himself, Jack Knight deals in nostalgia. He buys and sells the trinkets of past eras. At the same time, he's something of a contradiction. While he adores the objects of the past, he has a lesser appreciation for his father, a man who was a known superhero during the Golden Age. In other words, Jack appreciates history, but he has no appreciation for the heroic legacy directly related to him. This makes Jack's relationship with his father strained. Not terrible but not close, either. Nowadays, Jack would be considered a standard hipster, with a too-cool-for-you attitude and a brain filled with useless trivia. He's incapable of living in the now, because he's attracted to an idealized version of the past. Through his interactions with other heroes from the past, Jack begins to appreciate not just the hero his father once was, but the person his father represents. And over the course of the series, Jack takes on these heroic characteristics. He accepts the legacy and the possibility that he might not be the man capable of carrying it forward. When this realization takes hold, Jack does the responsible thing. He steps aside and ensures the legacy will continue in the hands of someone more capable than himself. The setting, Opal City, plays an integral part in grounding the story and providing an atmosphere that is both contemporary and futuristic. Its history, from the time it was established until the present time, is rather fleshed out and, like an actual speaking character, it comes alive. Of all the supporting cast members, and there are many, the one that needs to be highlighted is Richard Swift, The Shade. The Shade is the immortal narrator of the series and the unofficial biographer of Opal City. His methods are always suspect, and one gets the sense he tends to reveal just enough to motivate others into action. His overall goal is to protect Opal City, regardless of the cost it may inflict on others. He may be amoral, manipulative, and sociopathic to a degree, but one can't claim he's evil. The Shade is his namesake, a mixture of light and dark that either reveals or obscures until the necessary time. Ironically, like the old saying, the Shade lives long enough to become the villain of the story he's telling. When this occurs, the repercussions of his transformation are tragic. 
It feels like a betrayal to the city he's sworn to protect. There are numerous references to past superheroes, specifically the members of the Justice Society of America, who had been the subject of the Golden Age, written by James Robinson prior to Starman. Starman also includes some obscure or lesser-known comic book characters, Tales of the Dark Mansion and Scalp Hunter being two prime examples. There's also a brief mention of the Heap, the first swamp monster in comic books. During a later arc, Space Cabby, Space Ranger, and Ultra the Multi-Alien all get appearances. There's even an issue that takes place on the Blue World, created by Swamp Thing during the Alan Moore run on that title. Again, all of these elements give the series a sense that it's part of DC history, that it's not simply a reboot of the Starman concept, but a logical modern continuation of all that preceded its existence. Almost half of the entire series is taken up by two storylines, Star's My Destination and Grand Gignol. During the Star's My Destination arc, Starman takes a leisurely journey through the cosmic DC universe. Of course, Starman interacts with all the personalities and cultures of that landscape, giving one a slightly more unified sense of the DC universe as a whole. Unfortunately, this storyline feels like it's wandering. The intended purpose of this extended space journey was to locate Will Payton, the Starman of the 80s. However, it deviates to include obscure characters from the Silver Age. While thematically relevant, these deviations do slow the momentum of the story down to a crawl. This trip through space had been foreshadowed early on in the series, and it was slightly built up to be of great importance, but due to the slow pace, it feels less epic than promised. Grand Gignol begins immediately following Jack's return from space. This portion of the storyline is very similar in tone to any major storyline set in Gotham. The entire city is at risk, and all of the previously introduced superheroes work together to save it. It is cataclysmic, and the toll for salvation is quite high. It is a grand conclusion to a slowly established series of events. The remaining portion of the series is tying up any and all loose ends which gives the series a sense of completeness not ordinarily found in mainstream superhero titles. Nor does it feel forced, in the sense that sales were low, the series had been cancelled, and this was the writer scrambling to give the readers a resolution. As a conclusion, it feels quite organic. Following the conclusion of the Starman series, the lead character, Jack Knight, has basically disappeared from the DC Universe. In fact, at the end of the series, he actually gives up being Starman and passes that legacy on to Stargirl of the Justice Society of America. According to Wikipedia, in a deal similar to what Neil Gaiman has in place for Sandman, James Robinson has a contractual stipulation stating his version of Starman cannot be used without his permission. While I couldn't find anything to independently confirm this, it does explain why Jack Knight has been remarkably absent from the DC Universe since the series concluded. In the end, while Starman does have a few pacing issues, it is a solid piece of understated, somewhat overlooked superhero comics. The strength of the series is its willingness to regularly stray from the main character and to focus on the supporting cast and the setting of Opal City. It's quite in-depth, with a unique atmosphere, tone, and a respect for the legacy of the character in all its past forms. That's it for today. Like share, subscribe, and comment, and I will talk at you later. Until next time.